from New Hanover County Schools Television. Powered by students. This is your school news. Welcome to your school news for the week of January 26th through February 1st, 2015. I'm Allie Collins. And I'm Alexander Ellsworth. Topping our newscast this week, the school system holds its county science fair, Ogden Elementary reads books and donates to the Humane Society, and a middle school takes first place in the stock market game. New Hanover County Schools held its annual science fair last week in the gymnasium of Murray Middle School. Students in grades 3 through 12 entered their projects in categories such as biological science, earth science, physical science, as well as technology and engineering. YSN reporter Bobby Blue has all the details on this week's top story. A science fair project on which materials and design best held back flood water, and another study using citrus peels to remediate heavy metals from contaminated sediments were just some of the projects featured at this year's New Hanover County Science Fair. Well, my project is about um, what foods that you most commonly eat sting your teeth the most. And I came up with the idea. I was, uh, my mom always tells me to brush my teeth. And so I just wanted to figure out what foods that most commonly stain your teeth the most because I eat a lot of them. Over 180 county students towed data tables and display boards to Murray Middle School to be interviewed by judges on projects in life and physical sciences and energy, engineering, and environment. Local agencies involved in this year's fair included the North Carolina Aquarium at Fort Fisher, Cape Fear Museum, and Airly Gardens, just to name a few. Depending on the complexity of the project, some students even get um, help from local scientists from people at UNCW, from Corning, GE, anything along those lines. There are certain projects that have to be done under a lab setting. So because of that, they would need to have specific documentation to outline that. Each year, the science fair brings together students, teachers, and local scientists from around the county to develop in students an awareness of the importance of science in their lives and to cultivate students' interest in science. Participants in the fair also acquire scientific knowledge and learn important research skills. My project involved an, an analysis of protein concentration in different store-bought milk. Uh, this, the idea for the project was derived from a list or adapted from a list. The original project served as um, a protein analysis during processing in milk factories. Students at this year's County Science Fair impressed the judges with their critical thinking and good communication skills. From elementary to high school, the Science Fair demonstrated that they were both competent and confident. Reporting for Your School News, this is Bobby Blue. Middle schools in New Hanover County recently completed in, competed in a virtual simulation competition called the Stock Market Game. The competition was set up by the New Hanover County Public Library through stockmarketgame.org. 103 teams across Hanover County competed over a span of three months to see which team could invest their money and have the most financial gains at the end of the competition. Eighth grade social studies teacher Brita Clarkson's uh, three-person team from Williston Middle School won first place in the competition. I was excited about it. Um, it was fun to find out. We worked for over 10 weeks for it, so it was a hard-fought win. Uh, they did really well. In fact, I think they probably did better than some stockbrokers because they looked at the trends and they were looking more for short term as opposed to long term for the holiday season, but they were very studious. They looked up the stock market. They had lively discussions amongst themselves and they worked really hard for it and they really earned it and they're proud of themselves too, which I am proud of themselves. I'm proud of them as well. Also from Williston 8th grade, Social studies teacher and language arts teacher Lena Varnum's team took second place. The stock market game asked students, what would you do if you were given $100,000? Through SMG, students gain a fundamental understanding of investing and how to get their money to work for them. In other news, fourth grade and first grade students at Ogden Elementary School in Miss Leeds and Miss Colenda's class read the book Shiloh, How to Steal a Dog and Other Books with Animal Friendship and Empathy Themes. Each book highlighted the human-animal bond, displayed accurate animal behavior, were beautifully illustrated, and did not overly tell the message, but encouraged the student readers to discover the message on their own. 
These stories prompted a lot of discussion among the students and together they decided to help animals like the ones they had read about. After much discussion, the students decided to collect supplies for the animals of the New Hanover County Humane Society. Students collected cage scratchers, the cats, bed for dogs, nylon leashes, kongs, cat toys without catnip, towels, washcloths, white bath towels, soft dog treats, natural balanced dog food, rolls, dog shampoo, greeny pill pockets, and so much more. A member of the Humane Society came by to collect the items that the students had donated. The Hanover County Schools celebrated the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. through several activities around the district. Ashley and the Hanover High School bands participated in Wilmington's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day Parade. The Hanover County Schools kicked off its celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King at Gregory Elementary School of Science, Technology, and Mathematics with their annual MLK Celebration and Freedom March reenactment around school campus. Students, staff, and parents honored Dr. King's memory with a march on, the, on Gregory's campus that culminated in the auditorium with a special student performance of Dr. King's quotes and excerpts from his speeches. Ogden Elementary fourth grade students will participate in an MLK Junior Reading Roundup and Math Marathon. During these three instructional days, students re rotated classrooms and attended five different targeted skills-focused lessons each day. The fourth grade teachers planning, planned meaningful instruction by focusing on civil rights and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. students and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Students read, read pieces uh, centered around Dr. King and his message of peace and dreams of equality. The math of word problems contain facts about the March on Washington as well as other prominent civil rights events. Mrs. Parker's kindergarten class at Rachel Freeman School of Engineering learned about Martin Luther King Jr.'s peace movement. The class pledged to make, help make the world a kinder place with their own two hands. Finally, New Hanover County Middle School students will compete in the county level math counts competition this Friday, January 30th from 9.30 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. in the New Hanover County Board of Education Center. Our middle school math counts teams have worked hard over the past, the past few months to assemble their teams and hold regular practices. The competition consists of two individual and one team round, so the students must learn to work together and develop strategies to tackle the problems within the time constraints of the competition. The contest ends with an exciting countdown round where the top individuals compete head-to-head -head in fast-paced problem solving while racing against the clock. The contest consists of two individual rounds and one team round with prizes awarded to a winner from each school as well as an overall team champion. Top scorers then go ahead go head to head in a fast paced countdown round to practice speed and mental math abilities. This county level contest serves as a practice for the regional contest to be held in February. We'll feature a complete, complete report on the next weeks here on your school news. Now, when your school news continues, we have an exciting lunch menu forecast. Plus, coming up in 60 seconds, we'll have reports on Castle Hain brainstorming and sharing ideas for the future of New Hanover County, a Hoggard student winning the Constitutional Speech Contest, and Canines for Literacy gets a paw in at the Poor's Tills Global Elementary. This is your school news on cable and online. Look for our blue logo for all of the latest news online at www.nhcs.net. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Free throws, slam dunks, and fast breaks. High school basketball season is in full swing. I'm Joe Katz. Join me each week for the basketball edition of Sports Roundtable. We feature the area's most in-depth look at all the county's girls and boys varsity basketball action. Each week, you'll get a first-hand account of the defensive and offensive strategies from New Hanover County Schools head basketball coaches. The Sports Roundtable, Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. right here on the Learning Network. Sports Roundtable is made possible with the support of Papa John's Pizza, Hendrick Toyota Scion of Wilmington, Diana Corbin of Century 21, Sawyer & Associates, Port City Daily, and CBS 10, WILM. Welcome back to Your School News. It's a rare opportunity that young people get a chance to have real impact on the shape of their community's future. But the students at Castle Hain Elementary were given that chance last week when members of the New Hanover County Planning Department 
had one group to brainstorm and share ideas for the future of New Hanover County. We get a full report from YSN reporter Bobby Blue. Planting more trees, building a zoo, constructing a sports stadium, opening three-story schools. These were just some of the concepts conceived, discussed, and presented to New Hanover County planning leaders to think about as they work on the county's comprehensive plan. The ideas were generated by Castle Hain Elementary students who were invited by the planning staff to share their thoughts on what they think should happen in their county's future. So since they're going to be going to school, college, getting jobs, they're going to be the next generation coming up in the area, we want to see what they would like to see when they're older, get their ideas and their input for the comprehensive plan. The third through fifth graders at Castle Hain Elementary School were part of the campus's academically and intellectually gifted class. Their teacher worked with this young focus group to prepare them for this brainstorming session with the planning department. So the third graders have been working on designing an ideal city of the future for themselves and needless to say it contains a lot of child-friendly things like um, skate parks and flying cars and things like that. The fourth graders have been working on math standards involving measurement, perimeter, and area. The fifth graders, on their hand, have been focusing on asking good questions. Uh, too many times I think kids get focused on answers only, and so asking good questions is really the important thing to get us all learning and moving forward and progressing. It takes a lot of forethought and deductive reasoning to rub a crystal ball and look into the future over the next 5, 10, and 20 years. Students tossed out dozens of thoughts and reviewed the pros and cons of each one. Several students were focused on education and its future path in New Hanover County. My plan for the future is to improve schools by giving them the same education but even more education, like mechanic rooms, um, just, um, their own science rooms, reading, math rooms, and um, give it a mix of middle and elementary because we're the next generation and then it's like what what we do now what the next generation influences influences what happens in the future influences what happens in the future so if we have this idea then we could if we worked like say for the school board we could put this idea into effect and make and make this educational program better the New Hanover County Planning Department will take the students' ideas back to county leaders who are working on the comprehensive plan. Castle Haynes students are not the only ones who will have a chance to share their thoughts on our area. Planning officials will also open the door to middle and high school students. New Hanover County's comprehensive plan is expected to be completed this summer. Reporting for Your School News, this is Bobby Blue. New Hanover County Schools has been selected for a visit by the Friday Institute's Digital Learning Plan team. The Friday Institute for Educational Innovation at New North Carolina State University has received a state contract to work with the Department of Public Instruction, the State Board of Education Policymakers, Educators, Business Leaders, and other stakeholders to develop the North Carolina Digital Learning Plan. The Digital Learning Plan team will meet with Mary Hazel Small, Chief Financial Officer, John Brinson, Chief Technology Officer, Dr. Kim O'Brien, Supervisor of Staff Development, and Dr. Julie DeClose Greenwood, Director of Instructional Services, to gather input regarding digital learning in New Hanover County Schools. Parents, students, and community members are also invited to share their input at a meeting scheduled for January 29, 2015 at 5.30 at the Dale K. Spencer Building. 1802 South 15th Street. For more information, contact Holly Evans at 910-254-4314. Caroline Bunting, a junior at Hoggard High School, won the American Legion Constitutional Speech Contest for North Carolina's District 9, hosted by the American Legion Post 543. Caroline's topic was utilizing our First Amendment rights. Her speech outlined how now famous Americans exercised what they saw as their duty to seek constitutional changes which led to civil rights for minorities and women, especially the right to vote. The District 9 contest was open to American Legion Post contest winners from Bladen, Brunswick, Columbus, New Hanover, and Pender counties. Caroline re represented Post 10 in Wilmington. As part of its ongoing focus on literacy, Forest Hills Global Elementary has partnered with K Canines for Literacy to help third grade students improve their reading skills and further develop a lifelong love for reading. 
Canines for Literacy Dogs offer a judgment-free reading partner that can be a source of calm encouragement to children who may struggle with reading in front of others. A Canines for Literacy volunteer brings Monty, a certified therapy dog, to visit Forest Hills every Thursday to read the sele the, with selected students as part of the school's Daily Five reading curriculum. The students love it. They absolutely love it. And it has just sparked an interest because, of course, they can't wait until every Thursday and they're going to read with Monty and then so that makes them start looking forward to reading but they also start thinking about the book they're going to read or and interacting with Miss Roberta also because she's an experienced educator and it's just I, I can't wait to see the results because on the um, with the Canines for Literacy website one of the things that they boast about is that m most students will show improvement in reading. According to Canines for Literacy, therapy dogs not only help to improve a child's reading skills, they also help to motivate and support children, help them relax and maintain focus, and promote pet responsibility and a general love for animals. Now, Hanover County High School Athletics was honored to recognize 60 years of basketball in Brogdon Hall by giving Mr. Danny Parham, Dr. Boy Bryce Cole, and Mr. Don Sellers plaques embellished with a section of the original flooring from Brogdon Hall. These gentlemen were starters on the first Wildcats team to play on that floor in 1954. They had never even practiced in the gym prior to dusting things off to get ready for that game, and they won. Finally, the New Hanover County Council of Parent Teachers Associations announced the 2014-2015 Reflection winners. This year's Reflections contest theme was the world would be a better place if the winning students are invited to a PTA Reflections reception on January 30th, where many of those students will learn if they are moving on to the state level. The first place winners in photography were Grady Ochipa and Kaylee Hanlon from Parsley elementary. Taking first place in middle school photography was Maya Porzio from Myrtle Grove and Abigail Pazwaters from Laney. First place winners in visual arts were Myers Dumas from Vital Beach Elementary and Catholic Cummings from Parsley. The middle school and high school first place winners were Cameron Sinclair from Murray Middle School and Hai Wan Song from Ashley. Reflection winners in literature were Mayhan Lanzi from Blair, Gracelyn Whittaker from Coddington, Callie Gray from Myrtle Grove, and Mina Yukbu from New Hanover High School. First place musical composition winners were Jennifer Sinta from Eaton, C.J. Tyson from Myrtle Grove, and John Davis from Laney. Dance choreography first place reflection winners were Sierra Roseborough from Anderson and Catherine Player from Wrightsville Beach. In the final category, film choreography, first place winners were Aliza and Zoya Bandukwela from Blair. For a complete list of all 2014 through 2015 Reflections winners, including those students recognized as second and third place winners, visit the school system's website at www.nhcs.net. Now don't go away. Coming up, Snowy White and the Seven Chicks brings the house down at Trask Middle School. Plus, we have this week's edition of the Lunch Bill Affair. Your school news will continue after the break. Welcome back to your school news. New Hanover County Schools Transportation Department operates one of the safest school bus fleets in the state. A new, a new device that helps keep school buses safe are GPS tracking devices. GPS technology allows the school system to gather information that helps determine more safe and efficient routes, provide real-time directions to substitute drivers, and make sure drivers don't take unauthorized breaks or exceed speed limits. We get more on GPS technology from Cassie Williamson. Today, GPS tracking and reporting technology is integrated into every device, from smartphones to sneakers and watches. As this emerging technology goes mainstream, school systems are starting to rely on GPS to ensure the safety and security of students on their way to school. 
New Hanover County School System is among several districts across the state that has implemented a new GPS tracking system on school buses. This is, a, this is the best thing technology has brought to, to uh, transportation, I think, in a long, long time. The new GPS system allows the system's transportation staff to track the district's over 200 yellow school buses as they transport students about 2 million miles over the course of the school year. A product of field force manager, the GPS system tracks the buses along their daily routine, including noting each time the bus stops and the stop sign arm is extended. It basically tells us wherever the bus may be and how long it's there, okay? So is we can go back and look at the route the bus is supposed to be on and then compare it to what the GPS tells us and says, you know, the bus is doing what it should be doing or not doing what it should be doing. But it also tells us, you know, uh, is the bus uh, where it's at at any particular time. And when a parent calls me and says, I haven't seen the bus, we can look it up right then and say, yes, ma'am, the bus will be there in five minutes or it's running 20 minutes later so, or whatever it may be. But it gives us the ability to give us the parents uh, real time as to where the bus is and where it's supposed to be. And, and then also it gives us history, you know. The system was installed over time and is comprised of a small box on the bus. A small bubble is visible on the top of the bus where the system antenna is. A GPS-equipped school bus has the ability to map out the most efficient route for the bus driver, avoiding wrong turns or high traffic areas. With the help of GPS tracking, school districts can monitor how the bus driver is performing with notifications that report alerts, speeding violations, dangerous cornering, and sudden braking. This information can be used to counsel unsafe drivers and to ensure that children riding a bus reach their destination safely. And it's, it's improved our ability to manage our employees' time because now they're clocking in and out on the bus instead of clocking out in the office then walking across to the bus. Um, and again, it's given us a lot more information about how our buses are operating on a day-to-day -day basis and made us more efficient. You know, we've reduced our, our driver hours. Uh, we've seen where our buses may be sitting someplace too long, maybe idling too long and so forth. So again, it gives us a lot of information so we can be uh, more effective and more efficient in how we operate on a day-to-day -day basis. GPS tracking software and technology is breaking new ground in school system transportation. The expanding use of software is making students safer in a variety of ways. In addition, it is helping school districts like New Hanover County manage their resource in a way that before took dozens and dozens of man hours. The future for this type of tech is also expanding and soon every parent will be able to track their child's bus along its route safely to school and home. Reporting for Your School News, this is Cassie Williamson. It's time now for this week's Lunch Bill Affair. Across the country, school lunchrooms have gotten a facelift and a menu makeover. Lunch menu anal analyst Creed Rasson joins us with this week's school lunch menu so parents, students, teachers, and everyone working with the New Hanover County school system can plan their lunchtime options. Here in the newsroom, I've had a chance to review this week's lunch menu. We end January with some delicious meals, so let's see what, what they are. On Tuesday, January 27th, we start the week with three great entree choices, a spaghetti and meatballs and a breadstick, a chicken sandwich, a chicken cheese steak, or a cheeseburger. On the side, we have lima beans, a garden salad, and fresh fruit. On Wednesday, January 28th, you can choose from cheesy breadsticks, barbecue, chicken with a roll, or some delicious popcorn chicken also with a roll. On the side, enjoy pasta salad, Northern North Carolina sweet potatoes, garden salad, and diced peaches. On Thursday, January 29th, struggle to choose between turkey club sandwich, egg rolls with fried rice, or a meatball hoagie. Enjoy delicious side dishes, which include oriental vegetables, garden salad, and fresh fruit. On Friday, January 30th, we have three entree choices, fish nuggets, macaroni, and cheese, or, nugget, or nachos grande. On the side, indulge yourself with cornbread muffin, tomato and cucumber salad, a garden salad, and applesauce. For the weekend, I've got my healthy tip. If you want to cut back on overeating, find calorie-dense foods, such as whole grain pasta or rice. Eating calorie-dense foods at meals will give your body a feeling of being fuller and will help to stop from snacking during the day with high calorie snacks. After the weekend, Monday's lunch menu includes two entrees, chicken pot pie with corn puppies or a chicken filet sandwich. On the side, sweet potato waffle fries, a garden salad, and spice apples. 
It's not always easy to eat healthy on the go. Thank goodness your school's cafeteria has smart school meals and snacks that can help students build healthy habit habits for a lifetime. Now taking a look once again at your lunch entrees for the week, you've got some great selections. Chicken cheese steak on Tuesday, popcorn chicken on Wednesday, and nachos grande on Friday. That does it for this week's lunch bill fare. From the newsroom, this is Creed Rasson. Back to you. Thanks, Creed. Don't forget you can also catch the Lunch Bill Affair during the morning show here on the Learning Network and gets lots of healthful nutrition information online at www.nhcs.net slash nutrition. Now don't go away. Coming up, Snowy, White, and the Seven Chicks brings the house down at Trask Middle School. This is your school news on cable and online. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to your school news. To end the semester, the 8th grade drama students in Miss Sandra Jamak's class put on a performance to entertain and amuse their audience. The class performed Snowy White and the Seven Chicks. This comedy features a Mr. Snowy White and his girlfriend Amy as he is about to inherit a million dollars from his late uncle. However, there's a catch. In order to receive the money, he must marry one of six women pre-chosen by his uncle. And Amy is not one of them. As each woman tries to change Mr. White, he realizes that the money may not be worth it. You look like you use a good game of golf practice or something. Ma, your muscles are so flabby. They are? Terrible. You're in terrible shape. I am. I didn't even know it. What you need is a good exercise program. Sit-ups in the morning. A morning swim. A game of tennis. More exercise in the afternoon, like jogging. You, you are making me tired just talking about this. I think I better sit down. When was the last time? The production featured students as the actors and the behind the scenes crew. They were able to put the knowledge they acquired all semester long to the test, and the result was an outstanding success. Everyone at Trask is excited to see the next drama performance. That does it for this edition of Your School News. Recapping some of our main story, the school system held the county science fair, Ogden Elementary donated supplies to the uh, Humane Society, and Williston students took, took first place in the stock market game. Remember, your school news is online and on cable. And don't forget to start your morning with our light and lively morning show weekdays at 6 a.m. I'm Alexander Ellsworth. And I'm Allie Collins. On behalf of the entire YSN crew, thanks for watching New Hanover County Schools TV on the Learning Network. Have a great week.